Brooke Cope. Being vulnerable and figuring out who I am um, has been something that has been completely new for me. I walked in the race feeling fully confident in who I was, but God revealed a lot more and he is continuing to shatter my outer shell. You wanted to do the race for so long, right? It's one of those things that's yeah. like bucket list Christianese, right? Yep. We are going to oh, yeah. do this for the gospel. Yeah. Uh, you wanted to leave. Yes. Yeah. I um, still want to. The race is hard. Being in this season of traveling the world and doing things that people literally give up their jobs to do. And we give up so much to do this. And... Um, battling this thing of not enjoying something that I want to enjoy because I thought I would love it so much more than I actually do is very difficult. Battling that has been my greatest fight so far. I am slightly nervous. Talking about tonight or earlier, later. What, what's your game plan right now? Not to throw up. And so I didn't really know going into this, this three day event this conference, this camp. All I knew was kids were gonna come in and it was up to us to do something. Now we're gonna go meet some students. I'm hoping to connect with some of them today and share a little bit of my story. Ended up volunteering in the Boy Girl Talks, which is from the Beauty for Ashes um, program. And that's just kind of where my week began with all of the breakthrough. One of our teammates, she did a demonstration about depression and shame. And so that was kind of the driving point of what we wanted these girls to know is that, you know, at such a young age, kids, um, especially little girls, they put on so much shame for things that really isn't their fault. Or if it is, they don't know how to forgive themselves. And so we didn't want them walking away with more shame and more depression and more hurt in this backpack, if you will. A lot of girls struggled with suicide and not just the thought process of it, but the legitimate, I need help. When each group came through, I asked them, hey, how old are you guys? And I immediately flashed back to when I was that age. The visual flashbacks, I mean, they were so vivid. When I was 15, started depression, started having suicide thoughts. I think that's why my world has been rocked over the last four or five days is because I knew I could relate, but I didn't know to what extent. And then they started pouring out different things. Family issues, dad issues. One girl like sat in my group and was talking about her relationship with her mom. And I was like, wow, this is no accident that you're in my group. One girl had said that her dad had left. It had just basically put a lot of strain on her and her mom's relationship. She just felt alone. She felt like she just wanted her mom and it, their relationship just had a wedge. That's very similar to me and my mom. We don't have the greatest relationship. We're trying. Yeah, that all started when I was her age, when I was 14, 15. I moved out away from both my parents at 17. So I think there's been, for me, I've carried this guilt along the way. I packed my backpack of guilt of, man, I left my family. You know, obviously God knows. Yeah, it still eats at me having this little girl that is trying to comfort and tell her that it's going to be okay. Um, she wants that too. And so you have two people at two different seasons and two different age groups struggling with the same thing. And I don't even realize I'm struggling with it until I put myself in the hot seat. Like, because I went through what I did with my mom, like, I can sit there in that circle and talk to that girl. I can relate to her. You don't have to do this alone. Nothing you go through in life is meant to be lonely. That's not who God is. He doesn't just throw us in and be like, okay, bye. I'm not the only one struggling with mom issues or family issues. It's great. I, I really love it. It's just so intense. Like, it's just right off the bat, like this script didn't even wait. I was like, so, what'd you like get during the like prayer moments? And speak truth to them and more and more I'm finding my identity all over again which is like the season I'm in right now and I think it's interesting because 
I think people think like back home that we're these missionaries and we go on this mission field and like we speak the word of God and it's like we get here and it's like no like I get you like I understand like I'm lost in my identity too and I'm depressed and anxious and like X, Y, and Z all the way down and we're supposed to like go and preach the word of God for like another seven months and being on the race, being surrounded by 40 people, amazing leadership, a team of six people has really pushed me to be vulnerable and to accept where I'm at um, and not to be ashamed of where I'm at, but I'm still working through it. It's still a process. My thoughts come and go. Things of depression have like rooted up and just all these things have flooded in. And then I catch myself in the skit <laughs> and I'm acting and I'm laughing and I'm dancing with all of you. And then all of a sudden Satan is swarming around me and I'm like, this is my life. This is how it's been since month one, since day one, since I got on the field and you guys know, cause I told you in month one, like I want to go home. Close my eyes and I go here and all of a sudden, um, everything flashes my freshman year especially 15 year old Brooke flashes through that was the first time I ever had suicide thoughts that became my real battle that's what was going on in my head it was no longer acting so you're still fighting you're still fighting with everything you have yes no I don't want to lose <laughs> Fight, battle, fight, battle, he rescues, drop to the knees, peace, then joy. It's like the domino effect, you know, you, before you get to the finish line, you got some things you got to run over and some obstacles you got to go through. I definitely think God knew the timing of everything. Uh, here's this three day event with thousands of humans that you have to save. I think this is what I needed. The scars make you who you are, which is awesome. And that's what I see. I see my battle wounds of the things I've gone through in life and can only praise him for it. Ultimately, your plan is way bigger than our own, God, and so I just surrender my plan to you of everything that I had planned of going into this, God, and just move. Move in whatever way you need to, in whatever way you want to, God, and I just pray that we are obedient vessels right now and we come together as the body of Christ, God, one arm, one leg, and together we're just gonna be united and we're gonna change some lives for your kingdom, God. And so we just love you and we just, yeah, we're just gonna go with it. Whatever that looks like, whatever that means in these couple hours, man, let us just die to ourselves right now, God. And maybe there's someone in this circle right now that we're actually doing this for. Maybe it has nothing to do with these kids. Maybe it's just for our squad. Maybe M Squad is who really needs to hear everything, who needs to see the dramas and the skits. God, I have no idea. Because all I know is that you're good and that I love you so much and I love my squad mates and all the kids that I've got to impact today. So we just thank you and we love you so much and it's in your awesome name. Amen.